Welcome to March to the Pod, currently the only podcast designed to exclusively talk about the Sam Houston Bearcats. It is all sports with the Cats all the time. In this episode, Ben will give you a recap on the Cats' first scrimmage of fall camp. We dive into the football program's 2024 recruiting class, and we end by explaining how you can get involved and help your cats. I'm your host. I'm Corey Hogue, the non-FBS insider at Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Find me on your favorite social media channels at Corey Hogue Sports. That's all one word. No E in the first name. C-O-R-Y-H-O-G-U-E and sports. I'm joined by the creator and manager of Sports of SHSU on Twitter and Instagram. Also the chief operating officer of the Cat Fund and always a proud Bearcat alum, Ben Sorrels. Ben, how are you doing, sir? Good, man. Ready to uh, to talk some Bearcat football, some Bearcat athletics, and uh, games are starting this week. I know we got some soccer and volleyball in a couple days, so it's an exciting time, and I'm, I'm ready to talk about it. Man, this is going to be good. We got a good, a good show ready for you, and we got some really good things to talk about. And and the reason what and what part of what makes this show so great is what you're going to hear today, because you're going to get things you don't get on some other podcasts. Because we've got a guy named Ben Sorrels <laughs> who does outstanding work over there. March to the pod. We are a podcast on Republic of Football Network and an extension of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Please like and subscribe to the podcast and follow us on the various social media pa- platforms, including Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and threads at March to the Pod. And also, a big hello to those of you watching us on YouTube. We have a little bit of a following there. So, <laughs> hello to you. And if you're like, man, I've been seeing this guy on the screen a lot, you're not talking about me. You're talking about Ben Sorrels. He was on Behind the Bearcats with uh, Rob Hip. He does yep. a great job covering Sam Houston stuff. And he had our guy on there because even, even Rob knows that Ben is all knowledge all the time. Yeah, I think he called me – or he coined. we were talking during practice. I think he coined me the encyclopedia of Sam Houston Athletics or something like that, which I thought – I thought that was fun and interesting, but yeah, it was fun to team up with Rob. He's back in Huntsville. He's been back in town for a couple of months now, and he's helping us out with some video stuff on Cat Fund and um, helping to cover the team, and always good to have Rob, Rob back. He's a great asset, does a lot of great work, and uh, yeah, good to work with him, and it'll be the first first of many times we work with him coming up here soon. Yeah, I can imagine that there's a lot of things we could do, and, and Rob does a great job, and, and he's he's just very skilled at what he does, and but I'm sorry. He called, he called you what? The encyclopedia of Sam Houston athletics. I think is what he, what he coined the it. The encyclopedia of Sam Houston athletics. I don't know. I don't know if there's a better title for someone, man. Like if anyone yeah. called me the encyclopedia of something, I might just stop. I mean, I, I feel like I learned something every day. I feel like I got to keep going at this. If I get, if I get that term, I got to keep going. I got to keep up. I mean, <laughs> look, you got to, yeah, we're not going to go second best, Ben. There, there's no second best when you're part of Dave Campbell's, and there's no second best when you're March to the Pot or the Bearcats, right? We're going to be all in. So if you're if you're going to – we could call you the encyclopedia, but we're going to need you to start going back and, and 24-7, man, just read the Bearcats. That's all you can do now. I'll do my best. I mean, I, I've been around the program for six or seven years now. I feel like you could call me the encyclopedia for that period – Gets a little iffy if we want to go back 10, 20, 30, 40 years, but I'm working on it. I'll get there. <laughs> it takes time, man. It takes yep. time. And, and I can tell you, I, I don't know a whole lot of history about things because I was I was off not following sports for a little bit of my life as well. So uh, that <laughs> kind of stuff happens. But again, it's great that you caught up and Rob caught up with you and you guys yep. were able to get out there and and really bring some stuff and some video. That's a good five minutes. You should go find that on Twitter. Uh, I believe we liked it and shared it and, and yep. reposted it or whatever they're calling it on Twitter or X yeah. or whatever it is now. Yeah. And, and, I, and so, yeah, that was a really good segment to go listen to. Yeah. And I think he, he's going to be at practice Thursday. I think he's going to have some more content is what he told me. And then we're both going to be there Saturday as well, hoping to get some more content and interviews, maybe some coach interviews. And so, yeah, a lot of good content coming for Cat Fund members um, on Behind the Bearcats on Twitter, on my page, 
Um, yeah, so, and we'll talk about how to stay up to date and support the, the, the cats here in a little bit, but yeah, lots going on. Yes. And one thing we're trying to do is all of us link together because it, it's, you have strength in numbers and the more of us we have that get along and there's no competition with this. We all love the Bearcats. We want to see the Bearcats succeed. And if that's everyone's focus, we're going to do great things, man, for Sam Houston. Yep. Strength in numbers, man. We, we need numbers and we need people. We, we need people supporting this move to the FBS, supporting these teams and uh, getting behind our players and coaches. Well, we also need to bring them some uh, first class information, Ben. That's what we need. And you're yeah. going to bring that here because they had their first fall scrimmage last week. And um, was it was it closed to the fans or was it open to fans? Yeah, so uh, like I said, some media was there. Rob and I were there. And then there was probably 30 or 40 family members, not really any fans there. So, yeah, it, it was closed for the most part. You probably could have got in if you were a fan. Um, but, yeah, there was some family there and then some media, but that was about it. Well, those in attendance, if you're listening to this, you, <laughs> you will understand. First off, uh, for those who have never had the privilege of attending a, a football scrimmage at any level, whether it be – you know, fourth graders up through high school, through college and the pros, when teams start scrimmaging, especially with their own team, there's always some scuffles that break out. That's just part of the football. It's early in camp. Guys are hot. Guys are tired. They've been around each other a lot. They're sore. They're stressed because they're battling for spots. It gets a little chippy. The problem is if the chippiness becomes a lack, turns into a lack of focus. And, uh, and Ben, you were, you were telling me before we started this, that uh, Casey Keeler, it wasn't the program that he wanted out there that day. Was it? Yeah, there were, there were some undisciplined plays. And like you said, this is first full pad, first full scrimmage uh, of camp. And yeah, so there was some undisciplined stuff, like some excessive celebration, some late hits, which, I know Casey Keeler, uh, a guy that preaches culture and doing things the right way, isn't a big fan of. Um, obviously, you want to eliminate that stuff. Like you said, it's kind of to be expected, but you want to get that out of the way as soon as possible. We saw a little bit of it um, during that first scrimmage. So hopefully we got it out of our system, that first scrimmage, um, ready to move forward and just continue to get better. I'll tell you the good thing about it, and I'm not – I'm not ragging. This is what happens. This is what camp is for, and this is what these scrimmages are for. Mm -hmm. So you see that there's a late hit or there's an excessive celebration or whatever it is, you know, false start penalties, guy, like the Cowboys, right? <laughs> if you watch the Cowboys, you know, pre-snap penalties are a problem. It's, it's that way for a lot of teams. It's always a sign of a team that's not quite as focused or, or maybe not as disciplined. It is correctable. And that when I talk to coaches, Ben, all the time, that every single one of them tells me they want you to, they want you to make the competitive penalties, right? Mm -hmm. They're perfectly fine with, because you're going hard, you made a penalty, you held a guy. Okay, whatever. But the lazy penalties, the ones you control, they, those have got to be stopped. And those are the excessive celebrations. Those are false starts. Those are late hits, uh, whatever it could be. If, if you control it, they've got to get those out. And I have a, I have a feeling, knowing what I, I've seen in the past from Coach Keeler, that was addressed, and I would be surprised if you see that again this week. Yeah, it was addressed, and like you said, I I will be surprised if I see it again. And I think Keeler and I think the players and really everybody knows that there's a very thin line of margin um, this year, first year in the FBS. And if you're going to win games, you're going to have to play clean, um, stay away from those undisciplined penalties, do things the right way. Um, because you might not have as much talent as another team, but if you could be the more disciplined team, you might have a shot to beat them. And so I think Keeler knows that, and that's why he preaches it a lot. And I think we'll see things cleaned up uh, going forward. That's for sure. Oh, I, I think so too. So that was the typical first scrimmage. Uh, and I think this is our first year doing this. And so that's great because mm -hmm. we're starting traditions that are going to become yearly. And one of those traditions is – explaining to fans because fans and media all of us forget sometimes we have missed football man 
We hadn't had football. We haven't had cats football since December, right? We yeah. miss football. We're ready. We're ready yeah. to see them play again. So when they go out there to scrimmage, we expect everything to be like it is in the middle of the season. And it's just not that way. Offenses take longer. They take longer to install. Defenses are always ahead of the offense at this stage of the game. So there's two things that we will avoid on here. We will explain to the fans what we will avoid saying. And one of those is we you don't keep scoring a scrimmage. Mm-hmm. All right, nobody cares who won. That's not what it's about. And number two, do not freak out if the offense isn't quite ready to go yet. That is a a work in progress every year, and especially for a team going through their third offensive coordinator in three years, it is going to be a little behind. Then you count in, Ben, the elite defense Mm -hmm. that, that Sam Houston has. And I think you've got a recipe for the offense to be a little chippy, right? <laughs> like you, yeah. You've got one where the offense could be like, all right, look, we're, we're tired, of, which is good because that competition is going to make them better. But those are the things that you've got to keep in mind when you watch those. I, I think you saw a little bit of that last week at the scrimmage. Yeah, we definitely did. Um, and you hit on a lot of good points there. I think we just need to relax. Um, I know uh, the offense, it looked good for a couple drives there at the beginning, kind of sputtered out, but that was to be expected. And another thing I'll add is it's like the really, the first full contact practice as well. And so you add that element in, that's really going to favor the defense also. Um, so yeah, and then like you said, third offensive coordinator in three years, possibly um, third new starting quarterback in three years. This is a defense that's been under the same coordinators for a couple of years now, has pretty much remained intact for a couple of years now. Um, so it's no surprise that they kind of dominated. Uh, I think we might tell a little bit more about what the offense can do um, this coming scrimmage, um, this coming Saturday. So, yeah, we'll see. I don't think we need to freak out. It was to be expected. Um, new quarterback, new offensive system, defense is established. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll learn a lot more here in the next week or so, especially at this upcoming scrimmage. There will be adjustments made after that scrimmage. And mm-hmm. that's that's why, you know, and again, another thing that's going to become a tradition starting this year is – the first game, don't lose it. The season's not over if you lose or if you look bad or any – because teams make their biggest improvement from week one to week two because you can scrimmage against yourself. You could do all these things. You really don't know some what you need to correct in some areas until you play that first game. So that's why at all at, at the high school, college level – you really see that first game to second game being where you get your most improvement. Yeah. So yeah, we want to gonna... we, we want to make sure we look on that. Also, Ben, I want to you you mentioned quarterbacks. I, yeah. An update on that battle because that is something we're going to be watching here. Yeah. Still, still no starter named. Uh, the guy split the reps somewhat evenly. King King got a couple more reps with the ones that Grant did. Um, looked about even uh, during the first scrimmage, and so. Uh, Keegan hasn't really separated from Grant. Grant really hasn't done enough to overtake Keegan just yet. Um, and so it, it's still up in the air. We'll we'll see what happens. Um, I th- still think we might know something in the next week or so to give the guys a, a week or two before the BYU game to figure out who the starter is and kind of implement whatever system they want to run with that guy. But yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting. Um, Keegan's got to either, either separate or Grant's got to overtake Keegan and um, neither of those have happened so far. So um, I feel good with both guys. I'll, I'll be confident with wh- whoever they choose. And yeah, like I said, it's just a wait and see. All right, Ben. So people will listen to us because of the, what you provided early on, right? Like the insides, it's a little chippy. This is what's going on. Coach was unhappy. That's all fixable, right? Mm-hmm. But now this is the other reason why we love having you here. If the Bearcats were taking the field tomorrow, who do you think is the starting quarterback? Right now, I would think it's Keegan Shoemaker. Um, he's had the reps in the spring. He's established himself for a couple of years, was a starter all throughout the spring, like I said. Um, was even, I mean, Grant got to campus just a couple months ago. Um, so right now, I would say Keegan. 
I will say I think Grant's got a higher ceiling than Keegan does. And if Grant can get there, I think he'll be the starter. But if I had to choose right now, I'd probably choose Keegan. Um, but if Grant can reach that ceiling, I mean, I, I think he's going to be the starter. Uh, I think he's just got to get there because we've seen it before. And when he gets there, he's really good. Yeah, I, I, that is a, a, a developmental piece. And that's why I think Keeler was so glad to have uh, Grant there for for more than one year because that, that really yeah. is a big thing. Yeah, it, it's hard on a guy with – I mean, he came in in uh, early to mid-May, I believe, and the season starts – early September. I mean, that's a, that's a quick turnaround. If you're a quarterback, I mean, it's one thing to be a running back or a receiver. Um, you got to learn your routes and, and all that, but as a quarterback, there's a lot more that goes into that. And so uh, that's a whole nother thing you got to take into account as he's only been here probably two or three months and, and that's tough. So another advantage that Keegan has. Yeah. And quarterbacks have to know the entire playbook. They have to know what everybody is doing on the field because they are the the field general that's where that term comes from because they're the ones that are they're the maestro they're orchestrating that play to do that they got to make sure everybody's lined up looking at all the keys and so yes that takes time especially when you're talking reads uh that's where you will see the biggest uh i think the the toughest thing for a lot of people is on the reads yeah yeah and i think if you even give grant another week or two and things i mean they may have clicked for him already but give him another week or two for things to click. I mean, you never know what kind of upside he might have. And so that's why I think the second scrimmage is going to be really important to kind of see how things click for him and what he can do. And um, if he shows well, I mean, there's no reason why he can't be the starter. Um, So yeah, we'll we'll see. We've got a week or two and I think we'll know a guy. That sounds great, but you know, that's going to be the guy that that lines up and is the starting quarterback. Mm Mm-hmm. But that's not who I'm talking about right now. We got to give the fans the one name that they're going to go. I heard it on that podcast that Ben Sorrells marched to the pod. They were the first ones to say, hey, this guy is the next standout at Sam Houston. Yeah. yeah, man. Tell us who that is, Ben, because yeah. this is a good one, man. We've talked about it off air, on air a little bit. I know I've talked about it in cat fans some, especially after going to watch uh, scrimmages. But, man, I think we've got the next Davion Davis, Jaquez Ezard, um, even Ife Day, Nathan Stewart, and Quavez Humphreys. Um, 6'3 wide out from Butler Juco. Um, man, every time you watch him, he just does something that kind of wows you. Um whether that be a one-handed grab, whether that be taking a play for a long – or catching it and going 30, 40, 50 yards, whatever it might be, creating separation. I mean, he's 6'3 and runs like a 4'3'5 or 4'4. I mean, that's hard to guard. And so he's the best-kept secret. Um, I, I Like you said, you heard it here first, and I think he's going to turn a lot of heads this year in that wide receiver room. It's going to be a lot of fun. How many years does he have left? I believe he's got two. Um, okay. Yeah, so I know he's got at least two, maybe a third. Um, it's always weird with the COVID stuff because I think his freshman year was a COVID year. I I can I have a feeling that by the end of this year he will be on the radar of a lot of NFL scouts. Um, yes. I got my hands on some video. I have some inside connections. You know, <laughs> I, got my, <laughs> I got my hands on some video of some catches that he has made, and you know. He has just about every tool that you want, Ben. And so mm-hmm. he's got height. He's got some speed. He's he's a decent route runner. He's got the ability to get over. And then he's got body control and hands and the ability to high point the ball, which you need in the end zone. He's got all that. He's got almost the total package. He, so he I does. have to – I got to ask with these guys, how – how did he slip away from a, a, the power five? Yeah, so it's really interesting you bring that up. So he, uh, this last season at Butler, he played, I believe it was four games, and he had about 400 yards and five touchdowns. Um, and I think his recruitment was really blowing up. I think he took a visit to Kansas. I think he's from Kansas in that area. And obviously, Kansas is building a lot of momentum up there with their football program and what they did this last year. But yeah. uh, sustained a foot injury. 
halfway through the season. Um, so he didn't play the back half of the year. And I think he just kind of fell off of some people's radars. Um, and thankfully, Sam Houston stayed on him and uh, and was able to get him here. But, yeah, I think if he would have played all 10, 12 games, whatever their season was, and put up 900 yards and 13 touchdowns or whatever it was, um, we might see him playing somewhere else. But we're, we're glad we have him, that's for sure. Uh, no doubt. And the the reason why I think it's important to bring up that story and mention that is is because – it it really is an out of sight, out of mind thing, right? Like when you're when you're a first coach, a first year coach, I hear from them, why are we ranked so low in the in the standings in the preseason? Because you're an unknown. You know, we don't we don't know who you are. We didn't see much of you. For for these players, especially those in JUCO that have that talent, if they're not putting up those numbers every week, these college coaches, they got so many names, they've got so much going on. These names really do slip by them. And those are the ones, those are the times when you get those programs like the Sam Houston's that have been there from the beginning and, and they didn't get scared away by an Alabama or a Texas or a Notre Dame or somebody, you know, like that. They said, okay, Hey, look, you go take your visits. We're still here. Yeah. And when he got injured, guess who was still there? And that's the kind of way you get players like that. And he's going to be an NFL wide receiver. I, yeah. I'm putting that right now. Yeah. And uh, Rob even said the same. Very first play of the scrimmage went to uh, went to Quavez and a little bubble screen. He took it about 20 yards upfield and broke two tackles. And he was like, yeah, I, I can see it. Um, but yeah, and, and Keeler's talked about how the JUCO ranks is kind of an area that Sam Houston is going to have to excel in, in the portal area, uh, especially with a lot of JUCO guys getting overlooked with how, how many people go in the portal now? And that's where guys turn a lot of attention. Um, and so that's an area St. Hughes could probably thrive in is the guy who gets overlooked. And uh, Quavez is one, but they also got two other really good Juco receivers and Quintavious Workman, who's at least 6'6", six, six, if not 6'7", and has just some incredible tools. And then you got Malik Phillips also, who um, has shown some really good things in camp and put up a lot of good numbers at the Juco level. So um, I think it's a level they're going to thrive in, um, and they're going to have to because it's going to be hard to win some portal battles with, with guys here in the future. Well, and I, I spoke with him about that uh, last year, about how they're looking to JUCO with a lot of the portal guys because JUCO, a lot of the junior colleges are not getting the Power 5 schools coming like they were a few years ago. So that's an area where they can. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, if people don't believe me. They think everything has changed. I'm telling you, we're going back to the pre-COVID stuff here in about two to three years. Once all these players... I get through and they're done with all the their COVID years and they've expired. We're going to go back to, I think, a lot more of what people recognize pre-COVID. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, I think we're finally starting to phase out of the guys where we can start to figure out what year they are. You don't have to worry about, were they there for COVID? Did they redshirt and get a COVID year? Are they a graduate transfer COVID and redshirt? It's it's like doing calculus. It's hard to it's hard to figure out what years guys are. But yeah, the JUCO is going to be interesting. The the three JUCO wideouts I think are going to be a big piece of this team this year. And going forward, then you've got two JUCO DBs from Kilgore who are going to see some time in Dakira Cobbs and Demarcus Crosby. Um, and then you've got two JUCO starting offensive linemen probably coming in. So this is a team that's heavy on the JUCO area, and they've got a lot of experience and. Um, that's something they would want to really tap into. So it'll be interesting to see going forward. You know, as somebody who watches a lot of JUCO, because I do cover it, this is, again, one of those areas where this podcast, I think, if you're a Sam Houston fan, you, you're going to learn a little bit. And when you start giving names like Kilgore, the average college fan may not have any idea. But let me tell you, Willie Gooden out there at Kilgore has got a program. And that mm -hmm. program has – talent power five talent all over the place every year the offensive line we talked about that a couple weeks ago Tyler yep Tyler that's another one man that you are watching elite level players out there in Juco a lot of oftentimes oftentimes not everyone but often you will see these and and look some of them may struggle and then they go dominate at a group of five because the talent level is that high at some of these Juco's so, and it's not just Tyler and Kilgore. We got to give Trinity Valley a shout out 
Uh, Blinn College has got, I don't know. Cam they Newton. Got, I mean. <laughs> Blinn College has got 16 national titles and a bunch of guys that are in the uh, NFL right now. Uh, yeah. You know, Trinity Valley, they're champions. All They do great things out there. New Mexico military was national champions a couple years ago. That entire Southwest Junior College football conference, and yes, that just rolled off my tongue, Ben. <laughs> Southwest Junior College football conference. The SW, like you've done it a time or two. Uh, uh, every now and then, the SWJCFC for short. <laughs> I don't know how short that is. <laughs> it is some of the best college basketball outside of the Power Five level, um, and it, it is fun to watch. And it's good for me because I like seeing these guys get these chances. You know, yeah. it, JUCO kids get a bad rap a lot of times. I think there are multiple reasons. And right now, it's not a lot of times, often, especially now during COVID era, it's not a discipline issue. It's not a grades issue. It can be. Those those still happen. But it's a lot of just, I didn't get a chance because they didn't have any scholarships. The wide receiver decided to stay for a six year. The coach is going to give him a scholarship. You're not going to get one now. So where do you go? You go JUCO. You still have that talent level. Now you're, but you're, you just ended up at Juco. So I think Keeler recognizing that, and, and I'm not surprised, Ben. I, I sing this man's praises a lot. And it's because it's very rare that I go, man, what did he do that for? Because yep. he's ahead of these curves. Like he was on that before I was on that. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm watching these guys. Yeah. <laughs> and he, yeah, and- <laughs> And I was going to say, he even put in, into a strategy we've never seen before, redshirting almost all of his starters. I mean, who's done that before? And so, yeah. I mean, he's ahead of the curve. And like we've talked about this a couple episodes ago, he's a master strategist. Um, he, I mean, he's he's great in the X's and O's. Um, but man, when it comes to strategy and putting a plan in place, I mean, he's the guy to do it. That's for sure. And it shows every week because they, they can shut teams down. And hopefully this year... They can score on them, Ben. We're going to need a few more points. Yeah, just just a couple more. <laughs> just a couple. Just, we have a good defense. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we can score a couple more. I'm sure we will. It'll it'll be better. Well, uh, before we get into the next part here, I want to go. I'm going to go ahead and mention this here because I think uh, it's important, and that is the cat fund. Uh, ben, you mentioned the cat fund, and you you are a very big part. Uh, of the cat fund as the chief operating officer that's a pretty good sized role <laughs> yeah um, I, I, I get around a little bit i do a couple things <laughs> that's okay it's yeah. all right I, I, if you're into coo titles or whatever yeah. uh but the cat fund every bit of that money goes back to the athletes there are a, a few small operating costs but i would say 99.5 percent of the money goes right back uh, to those athletes, and they have started – the athletes, this started in January last year, uh, yeah, the Cat we, Fund? We, yeah, we launched in late January, early February, yep. And now they've gotten a base, and they've gotten enough people on board that they have signed some athletes, and some athletes are starting to benefit from this. And, and Ben, that's really what it's all about with the NIL. It is. Yeah. We, we want to support these guys. Um, and what a lot of people don't see is, I mean, a lot of these kids are on scholarship, but, um, that doesn't cover everything, um, for some guys and some guys have some extra financial needs. So you want to be able to cover that gap and also reward guys for staying and excelling on the field and off the field. And, um, yeah, we started recently, um, with football, basketball is getting rolling here too. We've got our golf tournament on October 20th, benefiting men's basketball. And we've got some other things going on there. And then, Baseball will be starting closer to their season and we'll get that rolling. But yeah, really want to support these athletes and we've hit the ground rolling and players are getting paid and um, yeah, it's an exciting time. How much, because you mentioned coaches, right? You start, you start mentioning things that, that uh, the coaches are behind how much support and what has been the response that you've received from the coaches? Yeah, it, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, it, it, our relationships with coaches across the board has been really good. They've welcomed us with open arms. And I think they've realized that they want to make an impact in their kids' lives. Um, they needed to be competitive in some sports in some areas. And so the reception from coaches has been great. The relationships we've built there have been great. And our working relationships are great. I was actually on the phone 
with Coach Mudge for about half an hour on the way home from work this afternoon, talking a couple basketball things and um, then talking some basketball recruiting. So, yeah, it, it's almost like a family relationship. They've just welcomed us with open arms. That is a tough job, man. I got, hey, sorry, I got to take this call from Coach Mudge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I actually called him, and then he had to call me back. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, still, I gotta take the call. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's hap that's happened. I mean, yeah, Mudge, oh yeah, Mudge that is, happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, Mudge and I actually had a conversation, but he was driving back from Colorado. Okay, um, and so he was like on the mountain or Pacific time, and so it was like nine thirty here, and I'm like, I'll take the call. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, when, exactly. When, when a head coach calls, you answer. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that a lot of things stop when a head coach is calling you because it is very important. And what else is important? You you mentioned recruiting. We're going to get back into the football program here with our second leg, and, and we're going to go into this recruiting class because I look at a number and I see nine commits. Ben, there's nine hmm. commits in the 2024 class. Am I the only one that looks at that and goes, "Wow, that seems like a lot." Yeah, I, I think it is a lot, and I think it is a, ahead of where they've been in the past, but I think a lot of it is a school like Sam Houston, you want to develop relationships early, get on guys that are kind of sleepers, diamonds in the rough early, develop those relationships, and get guys committed early, um, and I think that's played a part in it, and nine commitments, um, it's really good. I mean, the first one was June 26th, and so we're a little over two months removed from that, nine commitments, and it's only going to grow from here. Um and yeah, we're going to get into it in a little bit, but I think that's part of why um, there are so many so early. Yes. So how much of that is the FBS? Because at the, it seems like to, from the outside, because I am not, I do not cover FBS. I do not deal with a lot of FBS athletes. Uh, mm -hmm. I wait till they get down to my level if they ever get there. But the FBS, kids want those FBS offers. And that's what they're waiting for. And it seems to me that the the biggest difference we're seeing with the Bearcats is they're able to go out and get some of those guys secured ahead of time that some of these same guys, they would have had to wait until after the first signing day when these other guys, when they started realizing maybe these other teams aren't there. So, so instead of getting, I guess, the second level, if you, if you will, because that's kind of what you do, they're getting that the FBS offer. And I think that's led to why we're seeing so many commits. Yeah. And, and Keeler and really coaches all across campus have talked about this since the move is the level of recruiting is extremely elevated from what it used to be. Um, you look at 247, I mean, maybe a 2017, 2018 same Houston recruiting class and it's ranked 150th, 160th. And not that rankings matter everything, but last year, the first FBS class was ranked 95th. Um, and so that's a massive jump um, right there. And you're you're winning guys that have offers from Texas State, from an Arkansas State, from a Louisiana Tech, a UTSA, North Texas, schools like that. And you were never in conversations like that before. A guy might have had one offer from maybe a Texas State or Louisiana Tech, but that was their only FBS offer. But now a lot of the guys you're signing have three, four, five, ten other FBS offers. And that's just a level we've re really never been at before. And it, it's story and it's it's a lot of fun to watch and cover. You know, you say rankings don't matter and you you are a hundred percent right. They don't matter to coaches. They don't matter to when they get on the field. They do not equate to wins and losses. But you want to know where they do matter? To the recruits, man. Yeah. <laughs> Those kids, the kids in high school, they are all over that stuff. They're all over the rankings. That matters. It matters a ton. And the more they see your name up closer to the top of that, the better athletes you're going to get. Yeah. And I know, and just talking about rankings, since we're talking about it, I know some people have kind of freaked out or maybe not freaked out is the right word, but or been concerned that only one of the guys St. Houston is signed currently has three stars and the, all the other guys have no stars. But um, last year, almost every guy we signed had no stars when we signed them. And by the end of their senior year, they were three stars pushing four star recruits. Um, guys can only evaluate so many people. These kind of players aren't really going to be on these national recruiters radars until their senior year. So the stars will come. It'll come just just let it play out. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I, that's what I'll say. 
I cannot tell you how tough the recruiting world is. And that's why a guy that does it so well for us, like Dave Campbell's own Greg powers is just amazing yeah. because it, it really is in, in powers is on a lot of these guys ahead of time and getting them up there and getting them stars. But that's one of the things too, that at Texas football, we deal with a lot of high school football, you know, mm -hmm. Dave Campbell's, we made our name on high school football and so we're trying, we're getting into that college level now, but we made our name with high school. So we see these guys and we have in these recruiting services, everywhere we go to high school games where our guys are going, that's where you find the two, four, seven guys. They're all there, but why does it take a little while? Because they're not there to see the guys that are no stars about to get three stars, right? Mm -hmm. They're there to see the big time players. And it's, who catches their eye when they're there to watch them? That's what matters. And so, uh, you know, and then look, Tate all the time. When they start getting huddled, these guys are looking at nothing but film 24-7. Mm -hmm. And it, and right now, like you said, they're focused on the senior class because yep. they want to get these rankings right. And then once, once they're done with that, then they start moving into the junior class. They'll mm -hmm. really focus on that junior class starting in February which means yep. to Ben's point, they haven't had a whole lot of time to look at people. They're not at spring practices. There's not a lot of tape. They're trying to go back and watch junior film, but listen, kids, the improvement people make between a junior and senior in high school, it is massive. Sometimes it's a big leap. And so it's just hard. It's hard for these guys until they reach that 18, 19 year old age level. Yeah. And, and one thing I do like about this class, even though the, a lot of guys don't have stars is, these are guys that produce at an extremely high level. And I'm, I know we'll get into a couple of them. I'll, I'll break a couple of them down here in a minute. But um, that's one thing I do like. I mean, they might not have a star, but uh, a guy like Javon Wilson, who had a couple other FBS offers, was the 13-6A Utility Player of the Year. And, I mean, that's a district with the Woodlands and Oak Ridge and College Park and Willis. And those guys are loaded with Division One talent. He's the guy that won that award. So um, I love the production from this group, even though the stars might not necessarily be there just yet. Those awards are voted on by the, the coaches. So yeah. if the coaches think that much of a guy that tells you that they're a good player, uh, give us some others, Ben, that, that are out there that we should know about coming in. Yeah, yeah. The first one to commit was Dean Ford. Um, and he was kind of the guy that got the ball rolling. Um, and we actually had a story. We, we had an interview with him and put up a story on Cat fans and uh, had some other offers from Arkansas State, Marshall, Texas State, and Air Force. But really quality linebacker, um, really intelligent linebacker from Morton Ranch. And uh, just talked about how the culture of Sam Houston won him over. So he's, he's the first guy. The next one, um, I'll kind of go in chronological order of when they – when they committed, I'll hit on a couple more. The next one, I, I don't want to butcher this name. It's, and you might have heard this name. It's Fatou Makuba from LBJ High School in Austin. Yeah. Um, just really impressive, uh, great speed. Had an incredible offer list. Um, offers from K State, Colorado, UNT, UTSA, Tulane, and he actually visited um, Kansas State pretty recently, um, as of March. And I know they were really high on him. So that just kind of tells. Um, the quality of player this guy is. And he plays both ways. I, I believe he's the preseason MVP of that district out in Austin. And so um, those are the first two guys I had on my list and uh, first two guys that come to mind. Man, that that is fun. I can't wait to get him on campus and, and see what, what's happening. But Ben, that's in the future. My man, we're talking 2024 and beyond, and we're not even there yet. We're, we're according to Greg Tepper, we are today, we are recording on Tuesday. Uh, by the way, I think now's a great time to tell you all this will be released now on Thursdays uh, going forward. That started last week, kind of just happened, but it actually works out best. It gets our podcast out there a little bit. We'll be releasing it on Thursday. So we'll be the only Republic of Football podcast being released that day. It gives us a little more time at the top and gets a little more attention for what we're doing here, which is, yeah. which is always important. We want to get as much shine on the Bearcats as possible. And we're not the only ones. Ben, we, we hear this all the time. I don't know how to get involved. How do we do it? What can we do? Well, let me tell you. March to the Pod is here to help. We are going to tell you multiple ways of how you can get involved. Yep. And in this, you pick and choose what you are able to do. 
Not everyone can do one of these. Not everyone can do, but every every single person, I, every single person can do at least one of these because yeah. I will tell you which one that is. Right? It, I get it. We're gonna talk about things that you're like, I don't make that. Well, neither do I. Right? So I'm just marking that one out. But there are other ways you can support Bearcat athletics, and for starters, we mentioned it earlier. Uh, ben, I think the Cat Fund is one because. For those who can donate to the Cat Fund, that money goes to guys like you mentioned earlier, to players, athletes, not just guys. It goes to athletes who yep. are who who don't – they have that scholarship, but they just need a little spending money. They're three, four, five years in a program, right? Yep. These they, they could prob, They probably have a degree and could go start and, and get a job right now, but they're still here playing for our Bearcats and deserve a little bit of our support. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's what it's all about. And and it's a it's an area that really anybody can get in on. It's it starts at ten dollars a month and works up to around a thousand dollars a month. And so yeah, that's definitely the first way. And I'll wrap up our last segment with talking about um uh the last recruit I had on my list. And this was a guy that we had talked about um was visiting the program and the team was high on for a while is uh DeSoto QB DJ Bailey. Um reminds me and a lot of people of what Cam Ward did at UIW, what he's doing at Washington State. He's a winner, won a state title um, at DeSoto and put up some incredible numbers, um, almost 4,000 yards, 45 touchdowns and just two interceptions. And that's that's one of the things you'll get there on Cat Fund is recruiting access like that. Um, we talked about Bailey in there for a while and he committed. So yeah, that, that's where we can start with how to get involved with the Cat Fund. Dude, that was skilled. <laughs> The way you took it and went back and then added it all back in together, <laughs> I, I am sitting here wondering how is it, but you did it, and I am thoroughly impressed, man. Well done. Hey, I I'm I know we're on a tight schedule, so I'm trying to push it forward and, and also get everything in. <laughs> I hear you, man. No, oh, that that's great. That was great stuff. Yeah, so, that's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the cat fun. Look, yep. if you have the means and you you want to help support. Cat fund is one way, but this next way, Ben, every single one of us can do this. Everyone listening to this pod can do this. Everyone listening to this pod can tell someone else to do this. If if you hear there's nothing to do, if you hear I don't know how to support, let me help you. Go get your hiney and put it in a seat. Put yes. the rear end in the seat. You want to help support Bearcat Athletics. Nothing helps more than fans in the seats because it does a lot of things. And, and not just the ticket sales. That is important. Okay? To, not going to lie, it is a business. Ticket sales are important. Concessions are important. All that, all that is important. But that matters more to the players. You, yeah. want, you really want to see the Bearcats win. You really care about those players that see that they get the W. They need your support. The more yeah. of you that are there, the better they're going to play in front of you. And that goes for every single sport. I'm not just talking football. You need to fill the stadium. Bowers needs to be full. But yeah. you also need to fill the, the Coliseum when you've got basketball, all basketball, volleyball. You need to get out and support women's soccer. They're starting games this week, Ben. And mm -hmm. you know what? If people are, are serious – we should see a spike in attendance this year. Yeah, and I love that you brought up all sports. Um, and I can probably even do a better job of getting out to all sports. Uh, I, I'll tweet about it, but I could get there, maybe even yeah. a little more. So even a challenge to myself. And I know this week the uh, the volleyball and soccer teams have, a, I don't know, I think it's still going on. It might be going on for a while, but $50 for a season ticket for volleyball wow. um, and soccer. And so we've talked about how many home games they they have to start the season. And so that's um, a deal, yeah. man. That's yeah. a, that really is. You're not getting that. I, you know, I, you're not getting that at a lot of schools, uh, even division two or division three, you're not getting season tickets for $50 for college athletics that are a high level. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, yeah, there, there's even many ticket plans for football. I think there's like a, a midweek plan, um, like a weekend plan. There's a bunch of different plans there. I think basketball season tickets are live or will go live here soon. And that's coming up. So yeah, not just football, let's support all these programs. And um, 
yeah, get get to Huntsville and support. It means a lot to these athletes. And when you get Bowers rocking, when you get Johnson Coliseum, when you get the Don, uh, when you get Don Sanders Stadium rocking, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Yes, it is. And so here's another one, though, Ben. I need you to walk me through because it's a possibility we got some students that are listening saying, yeah, but, man, I'm a student. How can the students get into the games? Do they do they get in free? Is it just nominal? How does that work for the students here? Let's help them out. Yeah, so as a student, you as a part of your tuition, you get into games for, for free. Um, it, it's baked into your tuition, so go ahead and use it. Go to every game you can because you're already paying for it. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend um, – go into everything. That's what me and my friends did. That's kind of, kind of how I got started with what I do. And uh, I think you'll meet a lot of friends doing it. It's a great way to get involved. It's a great way to support your team. You'll make a lot of memories. And like I said, it's already in your tuition. So so take advantage of it and get out the game. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's entertainment, you know, mm-hmm. it, it is entertainment and they're really good. It's really solid entertainment. And sometimes you see things and games that, you will remember for years because they were just that kind of a classic game. And it's not just when they meet a rival. It can happen on any game just because that's just how athletics work. That's why we love sports. Yeah, and it, you bring that up. And I, a funny story, I was uh, sitting front row and we were playing, basketball was playing UT Arlington last year, I believe. And UT Arlington, I think, was second or third to last in the WAC. And um, we were in first or second place and it looked like we were going to win the game. And towards the end, Anthony, Anthony Vachez just throws down the most ridiculous poster dunk you'll ever see. And it's the number six play on sports center. And you see me and the couple of the people next to me were, were right there on sports center. And so it's little stuff like that, that you never know what you're going to run into. And it's a lot of fun. Yes, that's the thing. And hey, you got to watch out for them sports center cameras. They catch you quite often when you go to these games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> Especially in a, in a Bauer Stadium that only holds 13, 14,000, they'll find you. <laughs> well, we uh, just, hey, guess what? We're going off topic, Ben. Uh, shocker, right? Every episode, Corey's got to take a little diversion. <laughs> so when the when the Texas Longhorns, their women's team, were hosting the, re, uh, was it, it wasn't the regional, I think it was the first, second round at home, went to the games, and then I realized that general admission put where floor seats right behind the basket was called general admission. Right. So Mm -hmm. I I took the family down there. We're sitting there and then about halfway through the game, I went, Oh crap. We're on TV all the time. Aren't we? (laughs) And we were, yeah, we were. (laughs) (laughs) So, so I always think you telling you they see you. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. You start getting text messages. Hey, I see you at the Texas game. Yeah. I'm here, man. I got great seats. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the fun stuff. And that, that's that's part of the fun and going to these kind of games. Hey, look, I got a seven-year-old. When he saw himself on the TV in the highlights, he was like, that's us. That's us. You know, he felt famous. It was great. Yep. That's what it's all about. Yep. Yeah. So just that's that's how everyone can support. I don't care whether – if you give money, you need to be there. If you don't give money, you need to be there. If you – Pretend to wear the Sam Houston and like the athletics, like the sports, wear the gear. You need to be there every time you possibly can because the the athletes, they deserve your support. They work hard to win these games. They really do, and and they deserve your support. So that's what everyone can do, Ben. This next thing (laughs) might not be in everyone category, right? And this isn't. This category are for those of you who are listening who go, okay, but man, I don't get like tax breaks from the the cat fund, right? Like I would, I would give some money, but uh, tax breaks are nice too. And I I have it. That's great. That's called champions fund. And that's where we want to direct all of that. The tax free money you want to give up for the donation and, and get that, that off of your tax break. Yes. They, the Champions Fund is where you go. So, Ben, tell us how they can get involved, how they can find the, the Champions Fund. Yeah, Champions Fund for, for the, the high rollers, <laughs> kind of. Uh, yeah, so you'll go to the Go Bearcats website, the athletics website, and just scroll down about two-thirds of the way down the page, and there's a big banner there for the Champions Fund. Um, yeah, and if you want to give, 
to an individual program, if you want to donate meals, if you want to donate whatever it might be, if you want to give towards a stadium enrichment fund or whatever project might be going on, um, that's your place to go. And yeah, if you ever have any questions with it, uh, um, I could probably get you connected as well. Um, if you want to know where the money goes and how to get involved, I know I've connected a couple people to teams through the Champions Fund um, in the past year. So yeah, it's a great way to get involved if maybe you want to give a little extra. Um, there is a tax break involved. Um, so that's another great way if you have the money to be able to support the teams. And a lot of times if you give to the Champions Fund, I have a feeling tickets are part come part of that as well a lot of times. Or, or season tickets, right? Like if you give to the Champions Fund, you should have season tickets. Yeah, I think there's some sort of perk involved there, sweet. I'm sure. Something, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there should be, right? Because they they deserve that as well. Uh, But, again, we're all for these athletes. We're not talking about the perks so much. But perks for fans, we gave it. Man, if you go to a game, you see great, great action. You see some things you may never see again in your life, some unbelievable plays. Those are perks. So Champions Fund has perks as well, which is perfectly fine. There's also team social events. And in this one, I'm really interested in, in the, how we can get the fans connected. Cause I think, I think this is one of those areas, Ben, where the fans can connect with the players and those relationships are, are very important to getting people out to the games. Yeah. And like, I know in the spring and, and they, they don't happen all the time, but in the spring, the, the scrimmage was open to the public. I know in two weeks we have, um, the uh, networking event for junior and senior athletes. So if you want to network with these athletes and help them in the next step in their career, that's a great way to get involved and help these athletes beyond the game. We've got our cat fun golf tournament. Um, Even if you just want to help out with that Linda helping hand um, be around these players and these teams. Um, I know before and after games, sometimes there'll be team signings and meet the teams. I know the basketball team does a really good job after games. They really hang out on the court, shake everybody's hand if you stay around long enough. Um, So that's a really cool thing. But yeah, there's always an event a couple times a year um, to kind of connect with these players and coaches and be around the players and coaches. And um, yeah, just stay connected to that and uh, follow the team's social medias uh, and just stay connected. And hey, you'll probably hear about some of them here at times too. You know, if I'm sure we'll we'll have some time to get some of those out there and and everything. Where can they find these outside of social media? But is, is there any other place? Is there a website dedicated for a lot of this stuff, or is it really just sticking to social media? Yeah, social media is a lot. I think the Go Bearcats website, um, they've got a composite calendar, which, which has a lot of games and events on there. I would also recommend just checking out the the school calendar. They have a calendar of events and there's some stuff posted there. But yeah, staying in touch with social media, whether that be Sports of SHSU, which I run, Cat Fans, uh, Behind the Bearcats. We've got a couple student reporters that do some good stuff. Colin Colin Neal and Hunter King are some of those names. Uh, so just stay connected there. Stay connected with the team's social medias. And um, I think the more you look for stuff, the more you're going to find there's more stuff to do. If you want a place that you, you're like, man, I don't like Twitter or X. I'm not a Facebook guy, right? I don't want, I just don't do all that stuff. That's cool. But there is a website we're going to ask you to visit, and that's Cat Fans because it's a message board. Yeah. And in there, you can find a lot of that same stuff. But in it, you also get in with like minded fans. And, you know, I look, you want interesting conversations? Go to a college football message board, man. Cat Fans, <laughs> Cat Fans is not just. The message board but it's also informational it's yep. got the cat fund if you're part of the cat fund you have you know the premium information mm-hmm. in there but you there is plenty of information and people you may not even remember you may remember but you lost touch with maybe in there too hey you you connect up everybody meet at the game you're going to know when the games are it keeps you involved also throughout the week leading up mm-hmm. so when you go to the game as a fan you go in there, you you're ready to go, right? Like you're as prepared yeah. as, as the players are because you know what that what this team brings and what the other team brings. Yeah, great source of news. Uh, we, there's a lot of news that goes out on there um, about the teams. A great place to throw in your hot take, however outlandish it might be. If you want to throw it in there, have some fun, chop it up with the other people in there, and it's a great place to connect with people. I know there was, I think there was a forum started today or 
this week talking about the Cat Fans 2023 Fantasy Football League. And so connecting with uh, Bearcat fans that way. So it's a great way to, to stay connected, um, give your two cents on what you're seeing out there, connect with other Bearcat fans. And uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a good place to be. Okay, Cats fans, listen. And I'm not talking about the, the message board. I'm not talking <laughs> about the social media. I'm talking to you, the fan of the Bearcats. I, I'll, I have heard, I have heard we get disrespected. People don't know what we do. Well, you better, you're going to have a chance this year to show them. And you know how you show them? By going to the tailgate. And the first thing we want to talk about here, we're going to, we're going to go into this a little bit. The tailgating, Ben, the first thing I think is important to get out is where is the tailgate? And that has changed. Yeah. And so, that's a big change because Bearcat Alley has been where it's been for probably 20 years now, which was right behind the scoreboard um, at Bower Stadium, but it has moved. And so it is now in the lower lot by Johnson Coliseum. So if you're planning to come out to some games this year, Bearcat Alley has moved from behind the scoreboard down to the lower lots by Johnson Coliseum. So plan accordingly, know where you're going to park, um, check out the parking situation. Um, and that's where tailgating is. So, so plan accordingly. <laughs> hey, uh, first off, man, you guys, that parking situation at Sam Houston, it's not the most like going there for somebody who's never, who, who's not necessarily familiar with it. It's not always the easiest to get around. I, like, I wish they had a little better signage of where you actually enter to park and, and for different yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's going to be interesting to see what things look like this year, because I know it was implemented for a playoff game, I think against Montana State and then also some last year. But parking used to generally just be free and kind of a free for all parking, except for kind of where the players park by the stadium. But um, a lot of stuff is paid parking now. So uh, stay in tune to the Go Bearcats website um, when parking information gets released. Be aware of that. Um, know that tailgating is moved. So, yeah, a lot of new changes coming this year. We don't know everything just yet, but uh, tailgating is moved, and just be aware there's going to be some changes. <laughs> okay, so if they're going to start charging for parking, and I'm, I'm, we're going to be carpooling, man. Let's get five, six per car. We're just going to crowd on in there because that's how you do it if you're a college kid, right? That's what I used to do. Or you just walk, or sure. or or you park uh, in the gravel. Do I look like I do a lot of walking? You could also park in the gravel lot. Um, up the hill um, in the neighborhood that's kind of north of Bowers. I don't think the gravel lot is going to be a paid lot again. So gravel <laughs> lot, uh, put 10 people in the car or maybe just walk. So I think those might be the alternatives. <laughs> I like the gravel lot. We're that's charging you doing. for the gravel lot. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. mean, it, yeah. Yeah. No, hey, look, a gravel lot, there's nothing wrong with it. I've parked in gravel lots my whole life. I live in small town Texas, for crying out loud. Right? That's just how it is. Some, some of the teams play on gravel, I'm sure. With how well, hard it, is and it, how it can feel gravel. that way. I'll, I think uh, there's one high school that was just resistant to turf that finally got turf this year after uh, a flood came through during a game and they almost didn't get a field goal off. It was a 3 nothing high school game, man, oh, man. <laughs> because the field was that bad. So, yeah, now that, that place got turf. So, at least we're getting up to that part of the, the era. We have high schools with turf around Wichita Falls. Um, <laughs> and we have for a while, but holiday, anyway, I digress. Again, you took me off topic that time. I blame you. We love the small Texas town well, I do love small town. I grew up in a man. I love the Texas towns. There were there were 1,300 people in my hometown. And I, I, I loved every second of that, and I'm, I'm glad I'm – uh, able to get a, around to some of the bigger cities because I, it's, you know, it, it's a it's an interesting environment to be around all of them. It, it's an interesting dynamic it, to each one of those uh, feels in, in the different cities and stuff. Big cities like Huntsville, right? Huge city, man. <laughs> Huge. Like Huntsville's big, man. <laughs> Compared to where I live, yes, that is big. Four, Which, yeah, forty five thousand turns into about sixty five during the school year. It's a it's a metropolis. <laughs> hey. Yeah, well, it's not Penn State where they have more people, more students than population. I'd love to get there. That'd be cool. I'd love to grow to that. Yeah, let me tell you, that place is wild, man. But Happy yeah. Valley, they're happy. They're happy. Uh, we'll just go ahead and say they're happy. They're uh, fun. Well, back on the Bearcats and back to the tailgating. Okay, so there are going to be things set up, and we'll get to that if you want. Well, let's do it now. 
let's get to if you want to set up a spot there, you want to put something out, you've got a you're a business, you got something you want to sell or whatever it is, a, an alumni association. How do they go about getting a spot on all that bit? Yeah, so I'm actually looking it up right now. So there is a website where you can go to uh yeah, so if you just type in San Houston football tailgating, um, about two or three links down, um, there's going to be kind of a tailgating uh, page um, to where you should be able to sign up to be a sponsor, whether that be a student organization or a business, whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, th that's probably the place to go with Google. This is all brand new. It's it's all new policies this year. Um, but yeah, Bearcat Alley and special events, there should be a link um, and kind of some information. Uh, yeah, there's a policies link. There's a Bearcat Alley form. There's a Bearcat Alley map. Um, has each weekend mapped out um, and what it looks like. So uh, yeah, that's where, yeah. So tailgating at SHSU, Bearcat Alley, San Houston football tailgating. Um, you'll find it in there and find the right links. Okay, so now we got the people that we got to have people that want to do it, right? And so they know where to go. They're going to provide the fun. They're going to provide whatever it is they want to provide. We're going to enjoy that, but we got to get people there. Yeah. So to convince people to go there, what kind of fun are they going to have around tailgating? Is this fam? Is there stuff for families? Is it just college students? Is it a mix? How's that work out? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything, and I think it's a good mix of everything. Um, from what I've seen the past couple of years, I'm assuming it's going to be somewhat similar. But the band and spirit teams are out there um, close to kickoff. There's student organizations out there, which are really good. There's the typical kind of fraternities and sororities out there. There's local businesses. Um, and then there's just the people out there playing cornhole, throwing the football around, watching TV. And so it's a good combination of everything. And uh I will say there's a lot of people that have gone to tailgates in the past that don't go to games. And so hopefully we can get people to go to tailgate and the games and bring the party into Bauer stadium and keep it going. <laughs> okay. Now see that, that I, I have seen that at, at other places and yep. listen, fans, we can't do that. If you're going to go to the tailgate, go over to the game. You probably have a ticket. If you're a student, yep. it's free. Go over there because you had your fun and they had it designed for you. Go go. The reason for that is for you to go support your team. Yeah. So like you're taking advantage of what is given to you, which is great. We want you to all that we ask is go support the Bearcats. Yeah. Don't leave and go back or go out to party three, you know, three, three and a half, hopefully not four hours. I'm, we're trying to get college football faster for you. We understand Corey is with you. I understand. Yeah. I want three hour games for all of college football and it is possible. I see it with the NFL. Anyway, yeah. I digressed again. <laughs> get your, get over there, right? Like the tailgating parties and, and, but you want people to talk about your tailgating because we have Mike Craven's coming. Mike Craven will come visit at Bauer stadium this year. So yeah. Dave Campbell's is coming there. And if you want him to say your tailgating is the best in Texas, you have to show him that your tailgating is the best in Texas. And you notice I didn't tell you when he was coming. And that's my way of making sure you show up to every single one of them. And to read the article I think you wrote on, on Dave Campbell's Texas football and how to get to all 13 FBS teams in a, in a single season another another subtle plug there i see it <laughs> yeah oh hey what, what craven does is just amazing that guy has a motor that doesn't stop he's just incredible great piece this last week too with the manzel dog also yeah okay i'll plug that yes listen there there's not many times that i i read something and i stop and go my god that was beautifully beautifully done um but he did that. He did that yeah. with one of my, there was one uh, uh, earlier, a few months ago, Carter Yates did a piece on South Oak Cliff. Uh, the, and if, if you remember, like if you're in your mid forties, I'm going to go ahead and age myself here. If you're in your mid forties and maybe even above, and you followed high school football uh, in the South Oak Cliff days, back when they were really good, uh, the story behind that, then the story of how they became good again, it's really inspirational. It really mm -hmm. is. It was very well done by Carter Yates. Uh, and so now this one, this Manziel document, listen, why not get into this right here, Ben? I think it's a great time. There are 
a lot of things that happen that we call life, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think Manziel represented what he showed us what can happen when the support system isn't there. Not it doesn't even have to be parents. It, there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was no support system with any of the people around. There was no one to say, "Hey, Johnny, what are you doing?" Right? And we see that when we watch that document. But where we also forget to do sometimes is equate that to ourselves and understand that. Like Craven, at that time, Craven was in jail serving a sentence for a, an addiction. And it took him seeing that to go, oh, my gosh, that really is me, because he didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And and we understand that. Those who have dealt with addictions, we, we understand that. And those who have come through addictions, you are so strong. You have done something very few people can actually do. And that is get over an addiction. It is it is hard to do no matter what that addiction is, whether it be a, a drug or a food or we always talk about that, right? We all have our own little things, our own little addictions, if you will. Some of them are illegal and bad and to break those are hard. They're really, really hard to break and credit to Mike Craven, not only for breaking it, uh, but for opening up about that yeah. and for relating showing you the inside of we're not all perfect um you know and i think it's important that occasionally we take the time to talk about mental health i think it's important to understand that just like we 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 watch these players and we expect them to perform at their best but we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, right? I don't know if their girlfriend broke up. They could be battling depression. I battle depression. I battle it all the time. I battle suicidal thoughts. I was in the military. I have PTSD. I could give you all the reasons why I shouldn't, but I those are things for me to overcome, right? And I'm not alone in this. A lot of us, a lot of you listening, you also have things to overcome. The way we do that is when people have a chance to have a voice like a Mike Craven to put that out there, to show that vulnerability, because it's not easy, right? It's not easy to talk about these things that, hey, look, I go to counseling every few weeks. I wish I could get in more right now. Uh, you know, there, there are medications that I take to get through each and every single day, but that's okay. Because I'm getting through each and every single day. And at the end of the day, that's what matters to all of us is that we wake up, we go to sleep, we get to live another day. Yeah. And that's what's so great about life. Uh, and to show those vulnerabilities, to let everyone know, whether you're listening, whether you're an athlete, you're a coach, we, we all have our problems. Yeah. And yours are just as important as everyone else's. And it's okay to understand to take time. Now, I get it. If I'm watching a game, I'm not like, oh, my God, his girlfriend must have broke up with him. He missed that block. I, You know, I, there's, there's, we're going to be fans. We're going to be people. We're going to be humans. But also remember that humans make mistakes. Yeah. And um, I think it's just very important to get it out there to sometimes occasionally go through and, and mention these things. And, and kudos to Craven. It is... It was very, very hard for him to write. Uh, it is very hard to show that vulnerability. And I just, all the love to him for doing it. I am so proud of him. And I just think that if we should all use that as inspiration. So like you said, man, get to texasfootball.com and uh, pick up that pick up that, that piece on Manziel. I don't think you'll yeah. be disappointed. Absolutely. I know I wasn't. That was a... Uh... That was a good soundbite right there, Corey, the last couple of minutes. I think that's a good way to end it. <laughs> Thank you. I do appreciate that. Hey, and you know what? We wouldn't be here, Ben, if it wasn't for our listeners and uh, our viewers. And we thank you. You guys are doing it. We're, we're starting to get numbers coming in, and you're blowing us away. Uh, we're far above probably anything I think we thought we would be right now, and, and we're only just beginning. So, again, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please share. Please let it know. Get more people involved. And we want to hear from you. When you see us on social media at March to the Pod, all one word, 
Let us know what you want to hear, what you think is good, what you think is not. We yeah. want to know all of it. It matters to us because without you, none of this is even possible. So until next time, Ben, take us out. Eat them up, cats.